It's time to be learning with Jason. <laughs> oh, that's Party gonna be if it's <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Are we doing a thing? We yeah. Oh, this is my favorite. And we're already, this is already my favorite episode I've ever made. This is already a mess. We've already, <laughs> we've already, we've already lost the thread. <laughs> There's, we can only go downhill from here. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, welcome everybody to another episode of Learn with Jason. I am beyond thrilled to welcome Michael Chan, the one and only Chantastic to the show. Uh, how you doing? Welcome. How are you? I am so good right now. I've been I've been just looking forward to this since I put it on the calendar. I yes, I you know that's the whole thing. Like <laughs> I've I've tried to think about what it is that that I really love about this show, and and I think you just nailed the core of it. Yeah, <laughs> I want to hang out with people who are weird and preferably the same kind of weird as me. <laughs> yes yeah just, and that's you know, why i love you chat that's that's why you're all uh that's why you're all the best so we're all um, just looking for similar levels of weird exactly i you know i like where do we fall on the alignment chart are we all like chaotic <laughs> good because that's where i want to be <laughs> it's a good place good place all right all right we got got some first time chatters completely <laughs> confused by what's going on right now welcome <laughs> welcome it's not gonna get better <laughs> That's your byline, man. That's your byline. <laughs> Welcome. It's not getting better. Um, okay, so so uh, in in all seriousness, you are a uh, like a, a great voice for just creativity and and inclusivity and creativity on the web. And uh, for folks who aren't familiar with your work, can you give us a, a little bit of a background on yourself? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know. One of my favorite compliments is, uh, you know, one time we were on a chat and you were saying, you know, what I like about you is that you're just totally not a douche. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, and I, I immediately, stand by it. I, I immediately was like, should I put that in my Twitter bio? Like Jason Langstorff, <laughs> totally not a douche. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah. So yes, that is probably my goal in life is just to be like totally not a douche and be helpful where I can and support creativity where I see it and just have fun. Um, I think it's kind of hard. I think a lot of times, you know, we get stuck in our head about, you know, our career, you know, like capital C career and like, you know, being profesh and doing all this stuff. And, um, I just like being places, hanging out with uh, people who um, are open to kind of fast tracking, finding themselves in their career. And so um, lately I've been doing that um, on Discord with a lot of really fantastic people, people who've been on your show recently, actually, which is great. Um, and that's it. Uh, I can never remember the short code. I think it's discord.gg slash lunch dev. And um, yeah, do some streaming there. Uh, and yeah, just having a lot of fun. I have in the past recorded a show called React Podcast, which you have been on, and I'm hoping to get that uh, back up in uh, in 2022. But we'll see. Um, that is one of my favorite things: just being able to talk with people who are, um, I think, on on this like really fun journey of you know making a tech living and kind of discovering what it means to. I, like I hate saying like building a brand around yourself, but like mm. just being yourself in public. Right. And um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like you bring up a good point here because I, if somebody asks me what my personal brand is, I get kind of squeamish. I'm like, I'm not, I don't have a personal <laughs> brand, but if somebody is like, you know, how, how, like which lunch table would you sit at? in the cafeteria and I, and I'm immediately like, Oh, I sit at the weird kids table. Like a hundred, I'm the one, I'm the one who's over there trying to make like a spoon catapult and shoot peas into my friend's mouth. Like that's a hundred percent me. Right. So totally, <laughs> totally. Yeah. I was, I was, my table was definitely the like existential dread table, but like laughing it off. Like <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> to, to use Cassidy's uh, like incredible emoji that I hope she gets into the space. Just, just mild panic, like yeah. big smile, <laughs> just beat a sweat. Like it's going to be fine. <laughs> Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, that's my favorite mode right there. 
Uh, good, good, good. Um, but yeah, so, so, uh, I mean, that, that we could talk about that all day, but we should yes. probably like kind of stay on topic. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about, um, CSS. Smash Burgers. Oh, yes. Right. CSS. No, you're right. Sorry. We should talk about Smash Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Smash Burgers, you, you and I have had <laughs> multiple conversations about this because yeah. You, like me, uh, believes, oh, we just got some gifts. Thank you, Ben, for the gifts. Uh, but you, you, like me, believe that the Smash Burger is the, the superior form of the burger. It, it, that if a burger ascends, if, if a burger starts out as a, as a Charmander, by, by, when it becomes a Charizard, <laughs> it is a Smash Burger. Right? Like, that's, that's, that's how that goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, I wait. Have... Ooh, ooh, we got caveats. Caveats, yeah, yeah, okay. So I can appreciate any burger that's done right. Like, yes. so if you do, like, if you do a, a just a, a thick boy burger, like I, like I'm here for it. But I think that they are a like the process of making a like a, a thick burger taste really great is not as fun mm -hmm. as the process of making a smash burger. And for me. I like making smash burgers. So I got yes. this big, I got this big griddle out back. And like, I just like to invite people over and just make burgers for hours. And do you, so do you have the griddle? That's like legit the, the size of the one that would be in a, in a food truck. It's the biggest one I could get. I think it's like 36 inches or same. something like that. I yeah. have, the, have the same <laughs> one. <laughs> it's massive. It is massive. It was like, <laughs> You should have seen me like I was like, so it was my, I, my birthday this year. So May 22nd, I, the day before Put that in your notebooks, folks, I, I had kind of like just, uh, kind of catastrophically been removed from my job, which is, um, a, a, a strange story. But anyway, the next day I was like, I, it was my birthday. I'm buying myself this griddle and you should have seen me trying to like, just maneuver the people at walmart are not very helpful in terms of like like it's not part of their job description to like you know help you put a big ass griddle like in, on, in your cart so you should have seen me just like trying to just like i don't know what lifts are but maybe back lift like back lift this like big like 36 ounce like 36 inch box like onto onto a cart um but anyway i got it and it's my favorite thing in the world i've gained probably like 20 pounds since the beginning of summer you know just what? like making burgers Okay, I, I'm I'm swear we're not going to turn this into a 90 minute episode about <laughs> smash burgers, but I, I will say one of the things that made that griddle worth getting is uh, when I originally started doing smash burgers, I had gotten a griddle plate that I could put on a barbecue so Same. that I could so that I could make smash burgers. Right. But I yes. could only make like one or two at a time. Yes. And so that meant that if I had friends over, it was this weird thing where I would like hand somebody a burger and be like, eat this before it gets soggy. <laughs> and then they had to just like, like very uncomfortably eat a burger in front of everybody else who was waiting for one. Oh, and this is so uh, fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and so, my, so as I got the griddle, I could do like six at a time, right? So you can yes. really just start throwing these things out there. And, and because you're doing so many burgers all at once, as you're like finishing the burgers, you can take a big bucket of like chopped up broccoli and garlic and onions and whatever and dump it into the burger grease on the really hot griddle. And you get this yeah. like quick fried charred vegetable medley yeah. that you can yeah. just scoop out with the burgers as you go. It is. And and like if you don't tell anybody that you just fried that that those vegetables <laughs> in burger fat, you can pretend that you've created a balanced meal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's still some you know vitamins and stuff in there. You didn't cook the I, vitamins out. I assume. I I assume. I mean, if nothing else, there's fiber. <laughs> I am. Uh, I wish we weren't so far away because like now I'm hungry. This should I know. Be a I know. Show I know. Now. When when it gets less terrifying to travel, I I have a whole plan because there. You also at one point shared this list of like all the best smash burger spots in L.A. Yeah. And I, I want to descend on L.A. and just do like a dev burger tour of of L.A.'s uh, food truck scene. When you come down here, we're getting a film crew and we're just oh, just showing people eating us great burgers. That's, for that's real. what's happening. We, yeah, we need to make it. You know what we should do? We should do this as we should do this as some kind of like fundraiser event. We just get people to like buy tickets to go on a burger tour and we'll just do different cities. Here for it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, look for a GoFundMe coming, I guess. <laughs> all right. All right. All right.
right. So we're going to talk about CSS. Uh, we're going <laughs> to... So, um, so I feel like CSS is one of those things that I feel like everybody on Twitter, at least, has ultra strong opinions about CSS. <laughs> and I've always, I, I've Unlike always been- the opinions they have about other things on Twitter. That's true. I, I, I mean, everybody on Twitter is so rational and measured about everything except CSS. Isn't that weird? It is weird. It is weird that just that one thing they've become just, incredibly opinionated just about. Just the one. You talk about anything on Twitter except CSS and people jump right down your throat. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, so, but what I have noticed is that is CSS in in programming circles is one of the hot button issues. It's one of the things that like if you start yeah. talking about it, people descend in mass to to unload all of their baggage around CSS, whether it's in yeah. support of it, against it, why you shouldn't write it in CSS itself, why you should write it in JavaScript, what, you know, all of these things, right? Totally. Yep. Yep. I've always felt weird in these conversations because I have <laughs> such a like transactional relationship with CSS. Like I like CSS. It's fun yeah. to write. I can make things look a certain way on the internet, but like, I don't, it's not like I'm like going to bed. Like I have a, a stuffed animal named CSS. I give a little kiss on the forehead. I'm like, I love you CSS. And then I go to sleep. It's like, no, I'm like, okay, I just, I just used it because it was a tool <laughs> and I needed to make something look nice. <laughs> I needed to make something of color and there wasn't another way to do it. <laughs> Somebody's like, make it in, in JavaScript. I'm like, well, okay, if that's how this project works, I guess. Like, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so, so anyways, I, uh, I'm always curious, like, what emotions rise in you when you start talking about CSS, if any? Oh, uh, okay, so that's, this, that's a really great question. for the chat, question. too. Let us know. Yeah, I love, uh, I, well, I love you. I love you. Sorry, I'm just, I'm not ashamed to say it. Um, but the I love the uh, kind of like how am I feeling about a thing questions uh, in general. Um, you know this is this is really interesting because I got my like I kind of cut my teeth in like my professional web development career on CSS, mm. and the story was I like I was looking for jobs. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to be like a great PHP developer. And like in San Diego, it's just like all PHP and ASP.net. And I was mm. like, okay, that's not how I get my foot in the door. And um, I realized as I, was, as I was working on different projects with de developers and whatnot, like the, the thing that people hated the most was CSS. Mm. And I think we, we can talk about why in a second, but I think that was like, that was what kind of got me into CSS. It's like, okay, obviously there's something here that people don't understand. It's like misunderstood for, for some reason, or it's complicated. I mean, this was back when we had to support, like, I mean, like IE like five was like mm. something that we like had to like support. So like things that you wanted to do were still like incredibly difficult at the time. Not saying that right. they're as difficult, not saying they're not difficult now. CSS is kind of a strange language to man uh, 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 master. Um, but they were like nutty back then. Like the number of things that you had to do to do anything in CSS was just wild back in the like. <laughs> if you days. if you want to go down a, a really fun historical rabbit hole, see if you can find an article that just pulls together all of the old CSS hacks for like <laughs> yeah. Internet Explorer and Netscape and stuff like that. It was the it was ways. Basically, people figured out which browsers had which CSS bugs. And they would use them to conditionally apply styles in different browsers. It was the most dystopian nightmare I've ever been a part of. Of it was oh. it was almost as bad as the user agent wars. <laughs> <laughs> but then, to my like kind of like existential dread and laughing it off, I kind of enjoyed that space, right? Because it was just like absolute chaos. It was and full it was, blown mad scientist stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was so fun. I was really. Like, I really loved being in a space where it was just like anything goes kind of, you know, like if you if you make it work, that's the way to do it. Right. There's no like I mean, like, you know, we got some best practices after that, but it was like wild friggin West mm -hmm. for a while. And so I really enjoy those like places where there's a lot of discovery. And mm -hmm. like when you make a mistake, um, it's not really a mistake. Right. It's learning. And that's like a really fun thing for me. And so I've always kind of since that time, I mean, that was probably like 13 years ago now. Um, I have like really loved CSS for, for that reason. I think something that's really odd about CSS is that it's like a perfectly declarative language. 
Mm. And that makes it very hard to write. <laughs> and I think that if you haven't mastered it, there's a lot of um, insecurity around it, especially coming from like, you know, if you're an extremely capable like developer, the fact that there's this whole thing that like you don't have the time to master, but like, like need to in order to like make it work right. Um, it's very overwhelming. And so like when you find something that works, like you find your favorite, you know, whatever style of writing CSS, you find that it works, you're able to be productive with that and, you know, solve the problems like you think are the most important problems. Um, you kind of just get stuck in that, like you get stuck in that gear and it's just mm. like, no, this is the best way. And I think that, um, I don't know. I think that that's probably part of the reason that people are dismissive about like other strategies and whatnot. I think for me, it's just, it's just fun. Like I'm, I'm, I'm down for all flavors. I'm very interested in it. And then just kind of finding like, you know, the, where the boundaries are, where it like makes the most sense and, mm. uh, and whatnot. So, yeah. So I think that's kind of the, the lens with which we'll be talking about it today is not so much. Like I have no interest in like convincing people of like how to do something, but I do think it's fun to see what's capable what we're capable of in CSS. Cause right. there's a lot there. And a lot of times we just kind of like, I don't know, don't, don't touch it because it's like, we found something, we found our lane. It works like, yeah. so I'm not exploring anymore. <laughs> it, you know, and, and I think you bring up something interesting, which is that like, there is, there is the world of like, I need to build this project and I don't care how it gets done. I just need to hit this deadline. Yeah. And in that world, you start reaching for things that are convenient. So people are like, hey, let's use Tailwind because it's basically pre-configured. Hey, let's use Chakra. Let's use, you know, or before it was like every everything was bootstrap or, mm -hmm. or material design, right? Because it was just yeah. fast. You you had yeah. pre-baked solutions that would let you get stuff done. But then there's this, this kind of other world, which is way more experimental and it's art driven. And you've got people like Lynn Fisher who build yeah. out full blown art projects with a single div and CSS pseudo selectors and pseudo classes and, and background shadows and like so much incredible stuff. It's awesome. Um, and, and I, I'm bl like Cassie Evans is another, I mean, Cassie does a lot of like GSAP animation, but she's also a CSS wizard. Like, and there's so many people who do that, who just yeah. like make incredible things, either incorporating CSS or exclusively using CSS as like a constraint that, that makes the art more interesting. Um, and you can do all sorts of, you can do CSS only dark mode. You can do, uh, you can do like variables where, you know, you, all you have to do is change a CSS variable value and you can like change the entire layout of something, right? There's all yeah. this incredible power yeah. that doesn't require you to be a JavaScript expert. That doesn't require yeah. you to have all this deep knowledge of the rest of the browser. You can be a CSS expert and do a huge amount of things. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's interesting to to kind of think about CSS as not just like this one tool that you, if you're a web developer, you have to like find a way to get through the CSS problem. It's also this whole exploration <laughs> space in and of itself. Yeah. And there's so much to discover and like play with. And I, I feel like because the language is so like because the problem is, you know, so constrained, like. I like seeing a lot of solutions in CSS because there are a lot of problems. And like, the, I've always believed that the closer you get to the user, the harder mm. those problems are to kind of make general abstractions from. Mm. Like you look at Rails, it was like super successful, um, but it's like, it doesn't touch like styling or UI or any of that stuff at all. And honestly, even today, it, it's kind of like bread and butter is like that server, like client separation. Right. And we've spent, you know, the last like, you know, decade, like trying to figure out how to like do all of this stuff in a different way, like kind of like reorient the pieces. And like, we've learned that like, it's actually really hard, <laughs> like mm. in order to do like just client side sites, like, yeah, there's a lot of benefits, but it's actually really hard to like get all of the pieces just, just right. And I think that, you know, CSS is kind of similar because it's so close to the user, you know, it's really hard to peel out general abstractions that mm. work for everybody. And you see yeah. that with like, you know, things like Tailwind, where it's like, okay, well, we're just going to make a, cl a class for literally everything. And then you can, uh, you know, use that, which is, um, which is a really interesting technique. And, uh, you know, but it's just one of the many techniques that you could right. use. And I think what we're going to be talking about today is stuff that I kind of consider to be a little bit more in the, um, what is it? The thing I like about the things that we're gonna talk about today is, is that they work really well across 
frameworks. And so this might be a theme um, that we come back to. And um, <laughs> yeah, the, the things that we're talking about is we're going to be using data ad attribute selectors. And a lot of this came from like, you know, the last like four years of, of, of my work building design systems that cross that barrier of like, we had some properties that were rails. We had some that were like strictly react. We had mm. others that were kind of like exploring different technologies. And so um, it's so funny how difficult that one change of just like, you know, class to class name in react Um how much work that can cause for you in building a cross, uh, like a cross um, application framework, right. right? Because now it's like, you can't just have these templates that like anyone can grab and like put into their framework. Now you have to have at least two, right? You're going to have a, like a HTML one and then a JSX one. And so that kind of, that was like a big part of solving, you know, CSS for the work that I was doing before. Um, was trying to figure out a selector that was going to work so that we could literally just like grab a piece of template and then like move that to like another product, but then also have it be customizable in, right. um, you know, for that product. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the big theme of like the, or I guess the space in which some of what we'll ta be talking about today exists and like what it's designed to support, um, yeah. you know, if you have that type of problem, if you're just doing like one app, then it probably doesn't matter. Like, whatever works like use that well i mean you bring up a good point because like you, when i back in the day when i was at ibm um mm -hmm. there was a, a team that we worked with frequently the carbon design team and yeah. it was the design system for ibm they had to support like ibm cloud and watson and a bunch of other properties which meant there was probably 30 plus teams using carbon yeah. design and ibm took you know the, their architectural decision making kind of went to like front-end teams should use whatever they're productive with which yeah. is a decision that is both very good for teams and very <laughs> bad for for unification of of front ends, yeah. right? So we yeah. had stuff built in Dojo, in jQuery, in Backbone, in Ember, in Angular, yep. React, whatever you could think of, somebody had built it in that, right? And so um, when Carbon went to like roll out a unified design system, they were like, <laughs> wait, we have to make every one of these components in six different yeah, like front end languages like that's not yeah. going to work. Mm -hmm. And that actually led to like IBM changing its tune. And it was like, you get to choose one of these three approved frameworks for all of your UIs. And yeah. you have you it, it was kind of, it was actually kind of funny because it was like, you have six months to comply. It was <laughs> <laughs> this message um, will self-destruct. Yeah, it was, I mean, and, you know, obviously that's not actually how it played out. It was it was it was very like heavily collaborative. But oh, my God, did it create yeah. a lot of work? Yeah, like just so much work to get everybody to the point where we could share components. Yeah, and this is oh, sorry. So I, I guess what I'm saying is like when you're talking about like, how do we do this in a way that people can actually drag and drop between frameworks like class to class name is a big deal. <laughs> like It is, it, it's because, yeah. you know, one of these design systems is going to have 100 plus components in it, right? That's that's yeah. it's an exploding level of complexity when you start adding variants. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's something that I find really interesting because it seems like something that every growing company goes through, right? Which is that like we and I want to be careful here because I don't necessarily think that it's wrong, right? Like when you are starting up a company, mm. like yeah, like just do whatever works. Like however you can get it out the fastest, whoever is responsible for it, like do that. Right. Um, but there is there there is a a bill that comes due at the end of that when you're trying to stabilize your platform and become you know more you know use shared tooling and all that kind of stuff and it is hard <laughs> it's just hard I, I think there's there's something to be said for the fact that like you know I, I've I've talked about this for individuals but it's true for companies as well where at any given stage in your life you're optimizing for something. You are, yep. uh, you know, you, you talk about, I'm optimizing for career growth. I want to get to a certain income level so that I can solve this other set of problems and I'm willing to make sacrifices with my free time or my hobbies or whatever. Now that's not going to be true forever. You're change what you're, you're optimizing for as time goes on, as you hit milestones, yep. things like that. And it's on us to continually reassess where are we and what do we actually want to be optimizing for? Are we just following old habits and optimizing for something that we've already achieved? Or are we still working toward a goal that we actually have? And I think yeah. that companies have the same thing. It's just much more complicated because not everybody agrees on what we should be optimizing for. And yes. an early stage startup, 
almost everybody agrees we got to optimize for like getting <laughs> something out there. But then you hit these inflection points, 50 employees, you know, it, like you, you hit 50 employees, you hit the Dunbar number of 150 employees, and then things really get complicated. Yep. And then you, as you grow even further and further beyond that to where you've got a dozen teams instead of a dozen developers, you know, the, the conversations have to change and, and it's okay for that to be true. You can say, yes. Hey, we're at a stage in our company where tech debt is not the thing we're worried about, but later you have to have that conversation. It's like, Hey, we're at a stage of our company where if we don't address this tech debt, we're going to die. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, I, I really, really do think that those are, it's, it's okay to not solve all the problems right now, but you have to be aware of like, you are consciously choosing to let a problem exist for the yes. time being. Yes. Yeah. It's really, <laughs> okay. Oh man, I really want to get into code, but like, I, I, I'm going to philosophize just for a second or not even, not even well, but just, I'm just going to do it. Um, so I went on this trip with my partner uh, this, this last week. And um, basically the goal was just to like, be like locked inside with books and like, just make fires like in, in, in the rain. So that was like kind of the goal. And it was really interesting. It was really fascinating to me. Like I'm I, in Southern California, I don't build a lot of fires. <laughs> And like, usually when I do, like I have a starter and like a blowtorch and then just like put logs on there. So like doing it like the old school way was like kind of a new experience for me. One that when, I was when like, you say old learn. school way, I, I'm imagining you with like rope and two sticks trying to like get a spark. Is that what actually happened? <laughs> okay. I, I did cheat a little bit. I did use matches, but okay. All but, right. Okay. But, but just <laughs> like a match, a match. So I gave myself that the, one the, shot, the, <laughs> one shot, one shot. We're not having a fire. If, no food. If we don't, uh, you know, um, so yeah, so it was really interesting to me because like I got better and better each time I made a fire and I realized each of these, everything has like a role in a fire. And like the first fires that I had, like I had a really hard time kind of like keeping them lit. And until I realized like, Oh, I needed to have like, I need to keep like a really like strong, like bed of like charcoals, like below it, like don't clean it out every time because mm -hmm. that's like really that like, it's not providing a lot of like flame, which is kind of, you know, maybe the exciting part of a fire, but that's actually like what's driving the whole thing and like keeping it, you know, stable and whatnot. But there's those early stages, which are like a startup where it's like, you're just trying to get like one thing on fire and then turn that into like two things in, on fire and then like change it to like slightly bigger things on fire. And like, you have to, like, you go through these phases and like, once you've like actually got like a piece of wood on fire, like, the like babying a little piece of fire, like that's unproductive now, mm. right? Like it, it's not going to make any difference to like my, my, my fire produce, whatever. My fire isn't getting better because I'm sitting there babying like this little thing. And sometimes we do have a tendency to like, kind of like we, we pick our lane. Right. And it's like, you know, right. you're still, you got a fire going now, right? The company's going, but you're still like, oh no, I'm the guy who like just starts fires right and so like i'm i'm just putting these little twigs together and like trying to like make new fires and like you kind of it, it sucks but like as a company exactly like you were saying like you you have to have these phases where you're like or these conversations where you're like what phase are we in and what makes sense like we're mm -hmm. always taking out some type of we're taking out some type of debt against the future right by making it by by choosing a path like what are we okay with and what does that unlock for us? Mm -hmm. And like, is that the right, is that the right direction? And how right. long are we going to go that direction before evaluate, reevaluating? Um, it's, it's hard, but yeah. it's fun. I mean, like that, that part of it is also fun work if you're like willing to like dive into it. So anyway, that's, yeah, I, it's, I don't know it, what that was. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I uh, want to, I, I want to chase this for the rest of our time and i'm not going to because <laughs> as the chat mentioned we have turned this stream into a podcast uh <laughs> yes let's get to code okay here's what let's we're gonna code. do you're gonna rekindle the react podcast so we can have conversations like this yes. all the time yes and you and i right now are gonna yes we're, we're gonna, gonna get teach to us some css so that my show's not alive we're gonna learn something <laughs> <laughs> so it's let's, time <laughs> to be learning with Jason. That's my new transition. So now that means we've got to go into code. It started the go. show and now we've got to go into code. All right, we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to code. All right, everybody. So uh, before we get started with the code, let's do a quick shout out to our captioner. And we've got Amanda with us today. 
uh, to having to write down all this nonsense that Michael and I are spewing. Uh, but uh, we, <laughs> that's provided by White Coat Captioning, who's here with us every week. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, Fauna, and Auth0 all kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people, which I very much appreciate. Um, we are talking to Michael today at Chantastic on the Twitter, so make sure you head over there and uh, and give him a follow. Okay. Uh, welcome, welcome all. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, good. So next, where where should I even start? We're gonna do CSS attribute selectors today. Is kind of the the yes. broader umbrella that we're falling under. Yeah. Where do you do stuff like this? Should I spin up a project? Should we go to CodePen? Yeah, so I think that we could we can go any number of directions with this. I think that you could probably be safe with even just like a local HTML file and cool. a, you know, you know, kind of VS Code dev server or something like that. I yeah, think that'd let's probably do be it. fine. Um, Let me get to the right place. I think that might be the easiest, honestly. All right, so we're going to make a directory. We're going to call this CSS attribute selectors. I'm going to move into it. Perfect. And I'm going to, uh, we'll just, we'll have that set up as a, as a Git repository, but we'll leave it empty for now. So okay. let's, uh, and let's we're going to need, here. and we're going to need chat at the, like to provide some, uh, to provide some timeline stuff. If we get to like 1040 and we haven't started talking about burgers and CSS and that overlap, like we need a little bit of time there. So that's start, right. Yeah. H h help us out a little bit. Chat, um, you you all know the ahem command, so you're you're ready. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's um create an HTML file. Okay. And um in it we'll just do like kind of a generated HTML. Yeah, five. Perfect. Yeah. And then here. Nice. Gotta put that title in there. So I, I, I really don't like it when uh when all my stuff has like d default titles. Just the the local host three thousand. Mainly because I'm going to open this tab, <laughs> and I will never close it. And if I don't have a title on it, I just you know I'll be like, well, I can't close it, but I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, let's talk about what attribute oh, selectors what are. What are what we am doing? I doing? What have I done? What was that I, all about? I'm I wasn't going to correct you on your own stream, but I did think <laughs> it was a little bit odd. It's it's like a makeshift iframe kind of thing that you were doing there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We could go that direction. <laughs> Let's not. Let's. I mean, <laughs> if people can if people can turn buttons into divs, I mean, divs into buttons, we can no. turn head elements into buttons, right? Oh. Oh God, let's, yeah, <laughs> let's, uh, there's a, there's a really good article on this. That's like how to, what is it? It's like how to make, um, how to make a, the most, it, what it's like the most inaccessible site <laughs> with a 100 lighthouse score. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. Just this is real. This Real is maxing right there. Full blown chaos engineering. Like oh, y'all should go it. check this out because it is horrifying. <laughs> like it's bad. <laughs> uh, but it's also a good reminder that you know the the automated accessibility testing isn't enough. We can we can make bad decisions and the robots won't catch it for us. So we That's we true. do need to uh, take care of ourselves. It's true. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people on your site. Um, okay, so let's add three buttons. Okay. I'm going to do one button and then we'll just duplicate that. Yep. Perfect. Okay, cool. Now what we want to do is I want to add, um, so we're going to create a little bit of a problem for ourselves. So we're going to put, um, let's make one of those disabled. And so we'll get some, and so the text doesn't really matter, um, but we will need some text, I think. Boop. Perfect. All the boops and beeps. <laughs> That would be our podcast. If we had a, if Boop, we beep, had a burger. Pod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am in if you're in. <laughs> I don't need another project, but I want one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, feel... <laughs> I swear, a tech cooking show. I ah, dang it. Okay, 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 okay. Back on track. Back on track. 
Um, okay, so let's uh, let's open this up in. Um, you can do like a live server or something like that. Yeah, I, I think that's all we need. Just run one of these. Nice. NTL.dev. What's NTL? Uh, that's the the Netlify CLI. So it just lets me. It it basically is. Uh, it is intelligent enough to do framework detection. So if you go with an empty index stop HTML, it just kind of sets up a, a plain old server. If you've got Heck yeah. Gatsby, whatever, it'll start the right command to run Gatsby or or next or whatever in uh, in dev mode. Um, Look at it. Also runs serverless functions in the background so that you can like test that locally and stuff. It's it's super handy. Look at you and your developer experience team. <laughs> Look at look at what you're doing you, here. It's, this is it's, amazing. It's odd. It's almost like you would think that I worked for Netlify or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so man, this is a mess. What a mess! It's this is exactly this is everything I could have hoped for. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, okay, so so we have a um a button. I guess we really just need two. Um, we have a button and a disabled button. So I now let's add use. A, you, leave leave burger. That's <laughs> that's fine. Um, so let's add in our head a style tag. Um, where we'll where we'll start putting some CSS. Whoa! There we go. Style. Style. <laughs> Okay, now let's just go like a really classic. We'll do like a dot btn class um, that we're going to use to style this thing. Okay. And um, let's just do like, you know, background color and border color. I don't know, gold or ooh, something like yeah, that. Yeah, gold. Let's go with gold. I love gold. We'll go with uh, uh, the border of, uh, let's do something that's not like brutal here. Let's go maybe a brown. Okay. And then we'll probably need to change the color as oh, well I need to, to add the class, um, because yellow, you know, white on yellow, will be black, right? Oh yeah, we'll be good. It should be we got black. black. I think we'll get contrast. Yeah, yeah we're good. Oh, we good. We good. Oh, I need to actually like give it a border. Whoa, I got a new keyboard. I uh, <laughs> the the DOS keyboard team hooked me up, and I'm still getting used to it. So I have a lot of mis misclicks here, mistypes. Yeah. Okay, let's actually, for the sake of this example, since in a real thing, we would probably apply the color as well. Let's put a color on there just for the sake of uh, okay. an example here. Yeah, let's go with... Uh, we can do that brown. Yeah, we want to keep, keep the yeah. brown, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. going to be... Is there a dark cool. brown? No. What are my yeah. color options? What's a, what's a dark brown color, everyone? Is it like Sienna? That's a darker color. It's the exact same oh. color. Fire brick. I know that's Prince's favorite color. Fire brick. I didn't know that was a color. Ooh, that's a good one. All right, we're using yeah, fire yeah. brick. And then just for fun, let's change that one to current color. Change the border to current color. So then you can only have, you, you only have to change it in one place. Yeah, there we go. I love go. those. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. So what we're seeing here, and it's hard for me to see exactly because I'm on a very, very, very small screen with my like teleprompter right here, but. Like what we're seeing is is that like because we've applied a style here, we totally lost all of the default disabled styles, mm -hmm. right? And so we have a little bit of a problem because now we have disabled buttons that just look like regular buttons. So we need right. to to handle so that, right? All of these look clickable. This one is not clickable. We done busted it. <laughs> we done busted it, right? Um. So this is something that's really um. This is something that we. At, like when we're building out our designs for our buttons, we have to consider a lot. And so what you see a lot is just kind of adding more classes. So I think that, you know, an approach that someone might take is to have kind of like, if we were doing this kind of like a BEM style, uh, we would have like a dot button, uh, you know, dash dash disabled or something like that. Yeah, make it easy, bigger. Making them a bit bigger so it's easier to see what's going on here. Perfect, um, perfect. I actually, Honestly, I feel like if we had a Beat Boot Burger podcast, that yellow and fire, or the golden fire brick Getting is kind that. of, it, it looks kind good. Of, it's kind of fire. <laughs> <laughs> kind of fire. Kind, kind of fire. fire. I, I wish honestly would be how people would describe, not, it's not fire. It's just it's kind fire. of fire. It's kind of fire. <laughs> it's fire adjacent. <laughs> There was I mean, a fire I don't hate somewhere it. in the <laughs> There was a fire somewhere in the vicinity and there's embers over here. Yeah, like if nothing else is on, right? I'll watch that. Like 
Okay. If I'm so high got... enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've got giant burgers, uh, or giant buttons, uh, one of which is a liar. <laughs> one of which is a liar. Right, exactly. And so we could, st- we could like compound this and start adding more classes because that is mm-hmm. something that we do. We see this in, in, in a lot of places. However, so it'd be like button disabled and then we do this whole thing and that's, yeah, it totally. gets messy. Right. And so we have, we have like an API, like, so our, our job is, you know, providing these styles is we've, we just like create more and more and more and more API for people to consume. Right. Now, one of the things that really got me onto attribute selectors was um, as I started doing more accessibility work in our design systems. And I started realizing there's like all of these great, like ARIA labels and like, just like attributes that we should be using. Right. And that our design system was an opportunity to actually point people in the right direction to make sure that this stuff was being, uh, that they had the right attributes in place. So if we're gonna document it anyway, we might as well have an API that utilizes the attributes and ARIA labels that like actually make the site work better. (laughs) Oh, okay, all right, I see where you're going. So here we can, as part of our button API, Mm -hmm. actually hook into the disabled attribute. And so that just actually has like a slightly different style. So you can um, do, if you want, again, you can prefix it with dot button or BTN, I guess. Um, And then for attribute selection, we do brackets. So kind of like an array syntax. Square boys. Square boys. (laughs) I like that. Uh, Square boys. And then we um, just kind of put the name of the attribute that we want to select. So disabled right there. Now what we can do is we can change this to like opacity, you know, 0.5 or something like that. I mean, the uh, what we do here won't matter specifically except for the fact that we want to, oh, did I not do it right? Oh, it worked. I, there we go. I tabbed to the wrong window and refreshed it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we have, so now what we've done is we've actually like tied into um, an attribute that helps keep things, or rewards good accessibility practices um and uh you know kind of aligns our design to actually like match the markup that we have nice yeah uh and there's a question from nikki in the chat which uh is there is also a disabled pseudo class and what's the difference between those two or is it just preference uh sorry disabled pseudo class oh uh i I don't know i think i I couldn't tell you Right. If we did it like this, we'd get the same result. We oh, would. interesting. Yeah. Cool. So, so both both things work. I think the major difference is that pseudo classes only apply to certain attributes, but like any attribute in here could be targeted as long as it's on the HTML. Right. Like if we yes, it, would it even work if we put in a nonsense one? Like if I if I put in one that was like yeah, I don't know, you could. Let's, let's, let's do go butts, for it. and then I'm gonna do <laughs> button butts. <laughs> It still works, right? So, so yeah. we don't need a specific pseudo class. You can literally just target any attribute on on one of these. So that's the main difference, I think, is that you you have um, a little. It's a little more freeform, which you know, yes. depending on on your your risk tolerance, is either a great or a terrible thing. Yeah, that's a that's a really great call out. I'd never done it with the uh, disabled uh, kind of pseudo selector, but yeah, I think. Ooh, hold what on, you've... we have a good question that I've never tried. So, is will this create a pseudo selector? I don't think it will. Let's try. <laughs> it does not. So, so these are special cases that CSS will detect. This is nonsense that CSS doesn't care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do think that those are protected. So, uh, yeah, beep boop burgers butts. It, the, the name just keeps getting better. <laughs> getting worse that's us we're the butts in this uh in this scenario um, <laughs> okay so we got beep boop burgers butts and uh 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 boop is disabled which is great and so we we have that and we're using the the what is it pseudo selector right now but oh, right because um, instead of the I, instead of the this one yeah now the cool thing is, is that this works with all kinds of things too. So there's also an aria disabled, which is is slightly uh, a slightly different queue. Um, but if you wanted to change, like let's change burger to aria disabled, we could specifically, you know, we could tie into the same style, or we could provide um, specific styles for this as well. So like maybe 
we want to make this one, you know, uh, visually hidden or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. Again, this is not about specifically the accessibility solutions, um, but just that this is a way that we can tie into those. And so the, an, an important thing to keep in mind here is that these might look like they do the same thing, but they do different things. Because yes. if we ARIA disabled, you can still click it, but somebody who was using keyboards wouldn't be able to. Right. Yeah, so yeah. this this would actually be a very bad thing to do without adding this one as well. And if you add this one, screen readers will automatically apply this one, right? So so typically speaking, we wouldn't want to add this unless we had an extenuating circumstance. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I think actually I know uh, uh, Ben Myers is in chat, and I think that they could provide oh, he says, a. Keyboard support is still supported for ARIA disabled. Um, so it would change the screen reader announcement. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Yep. 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 So yeah. So the, the I guess the benefit here is, is that we have some additional tie-ins. So if you wanted to, you know, write selectors that targeted but like when both were um both were there or just one was there or one mm. without the other, you can still write the selectors to kind of like match each of these attributes individually. Um, and then as you create, as you demonstrated there, you can actually use these selectors to target specific values. Yes. Um, you know, so like true and false. So if you, if this changed to false, um, you know, you could have like a true and false case specifically for those um, and then ensure that it's not just that attribute, but then also specific values. Um, this comes in really handy with a lot of, there's a lot of like really cool, um, you know, attrib uh, attributes for HTML elements that people don't know about for like, mm. you know, I just learned about a bunch, um, you know, Ben Myers just showed me a bunch for time, right? There's like, it's like item prop or something like that, that talks about that, that, that um, says when the date or when the article was published, mm. right? So mm -hmm. you could style something based on like the publish of the thing based on the attribute, you know, and then get that kind of like whatever SEO juice you get out of that um, by using that instead of a like, you know, date published class. Right. So there's a lot of things that you can, you know, kind of build a system around that's actually going to help you with your, you know, accessibility, your SEO, all kinds of things um, with this approach. Yeah. 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 Well, cool. So, uh, so this is, I mean, and, and what I think is cool about this too is like this opens up a door to something that, um, like, if we just write semantic HTML, <laughs> then we can start to have design systems that that just rely on that, right? So instead of yeah. instead of like class soup or or having to get into something really rigid like BEM or because because there are advantages in both directions, right? Like yes. BEM is interesting because it it doesn't care what your markup is; it cares about the the specific structure of things. So you're building a component that is a collection of of parent and child elements that you know form an article or a, a button yeah. collection or, or something like that and it will style based on the presence of those those hierarchies and and like child elements yep semantic html would be more like okay you have to have an input and it has to have the the type of text to get this style and that way you're kind of saying like hey do it the right way and it'll just <laughs> <Yeah>. work <laughs> <laughs> it'll just work yeah yeah and i do want to be careful here because i think that again this um, I, I want to put another caveat on this because I had said that like one of my goals here was to support kind of like products, you know, kind of like cross cross framework. Mm -hmm. But you bring up an interesting point. We're only supporting products in the cross web framework domain, mm -hmm. right? So one of the things that's really interesting about React and is that you can basically build a React app and distribute to many platforms. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, you know, so like thinking about how those components tie to web and also native elements, you, you're you working at an, an abstraction that is like, that uses, you know, the DOM as like a target, right? And so like, I do want to be like very honest that like this is very much a like web first way of thinking about these things where it's like, I'm going to be using the web, using the web elements, like utilizing fully like the attributes and power of the web browser that are like given to me. And so like, if that's your goal, like this is, this is great because it's really doubling down on the web. However, it doesn't solve that other problem of like, I want to like write it one and done everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is it's a good this is a good time you know to just add on to your caveat to remind everybody 
that to quote Sunil Pai, so there are no silver bullets and silver bullets only work on werewolf shaped problems. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so the, you know, we're, you always need to fit the, the, you have to look at the problem you're trying to solve and then choose a tool that solves that problem. So you, you can't, you can't take a solution and say, great, I've solved all problems forever yes. and, and ever. Amen. It's very much like, okay, I have a new problem. What is the right tool so that I can solve this problem? And our goal as web devs is to expand our understanding and get more experience with more tools so that we're very quick to know which tool we should reach for. Um, mm -hmm. the, the old adage is like somebody calls a plumber and they're like, hey, my, my water heater doesn't work. And the plumber comes and looks at the water heater and like pounds on one specific spot and it turns back on. And they go, great, that'll be $500. And they're like, wait, you charged me $500 to like hit my water heater? He goes, no, you paid me for the 10 years of experience that let me know exactly where to hit it so it would turn on, right? That's what makes you valuable as a web dev. It's yeah. not coming in and saying, I will solve all problems with my favorite framework because I've decided it's the best and I will like turn <laughs> your problem into a nail so that I can apply this hammer to it. Um, that's, that, that's experience, that's value is, is knowing how to, how to weigh the trade-offs and choose the right tool. Yeah, that's so incredibly well put. I appreciate the, uh, the the analogy there. It's very very apt. Werewolf werewolf problems. <laughs> werewolf. Yeah, make sure that one gets credited to Sunil Pai because it was funny <laughs> as hell. <laughs> Actually, in fact, let me let me find this now so that I can link to it because it's uh, it's a good one. I want this as like a Taylor Swift song. Something I like I, I feel like you know. I feel like Taylor would do a really good job, uh, you know, turning silver bullets and werewolf problems into a just killer melody. How do you? I'm so bad at Twitter search. <laughs> Ninety nine problems and a werewolf ain't one. Here it is. Here's the <laughs> here's the tweet. All right. So uh, yeah, go everybody go go quote tweet that one. Let's confuse the hell out of Sunil on why this one is suddenly <laughs> picking up steam several days later. <laughs> All right, so so back to our buttons. Um, yes. We we now know this is not a this isn't a catch all. This isn't going to solve all of our problems. But we also know that it's a powerful way to avoid having to add tons and tons of classes to everything that we create. Yes. Yep. So what else can we do, or what else do you want to show off here? Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of like section one. I wanted to show like kind of what the value of attribute selectors are, what they're originally designed for. Um, in the next sections, we're going to abuse them for our advantage. Uh, and that is something that I find very fun about the web. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Excellent. <laughs> so next, you can um, keep this on the same page or not, um, but let's do three um, images now. Okay. We will go. Uh, let's let's do this. We will we'll do like sections. Yeah. Perfect. And then we can make each section um, its own thing so that we can. We can kind of do do fun stuff, but also keep everything a little bit separate here. So let's go with one of these. How does Emmet work? I can go source. Does that work? Yeah, there it is. All nice. right. So um, then you, you can use my avatar. I just made a new fancy URL, making it uh, with a Netlify uh, redirect. Okay. Ding! Where is it? And uh, yeah, so it's uh, HTTPS colon slash slash chan dot dev slash avatars slash latest that is that's cool and then we'll we'll make that self-closing because the the old school xhtml developer me can't not do that <laughs> and then we're gonna do how do we do let's see github.com will let you do one of these i think okay nice does that work i don't know i've never done that before it's one of it's something like that. We'll we'll try it and see how it goes. Let's let's make sure that works before we go any further. Nope, mine broke. Is it PNG? There it is. Okay. What? So uh so you That's can do that. That's amazing. And then uh who else? Who else is in here? What's uh what's let's see, AJC web dev, who's, you got the who's same. someone we trust to pass a link in. <laughs> there you are. Cool. Oh, right, there we so, go. Look at yeah. it. Look at it. What Man, uh look at these handsome fellows. All right. So now what we can do is uh let's make these are, are you are we about to like style these to make them line up or should I do a quick quick lineup on them? Uh, we are not, but we could. Yeah, so let's add like a let's add a like image class or something like that if you want. Um, you know, or yeah, d just do it however you however you want. So yeah, so what I was gonna do is I was I was literally gonna hit it with a hammer and just say like section and we go display 
flex and then we'd go flex direction or we don't even need that part we would just go with like a gap of one ram uh and then we could go section how great is image, flex gap and we could go like width let's go with 150 and that should that should just do yeah there we go just does the same <sighs> look at you look I at this it. fast coding it's so you've been nice. learning for so long it just comes so naturally <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> what we're going to do now is I want to show you kind of the power of attribute selectors for um, debugging. So okay. what we're going to do is we're going to kind of continue that theme of, uh, you know, kind of good accessibility practices and markup and whatnot. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, you you were very diligent to take off the attribute or uh, uh, put on the alt attributes, um, but I want you to take them off to of at least one actually let's, let's do, do this because this. this one's incorrect anyways okay yeah let's take that off and then for the other one let's leave it empty um because there is a case where you would want to provide it, it is legal to um provide a empty alt attribute if you're kind of using the image only as decoration like if you have right. your name jason langstorff and an avatar you can just leave that off because you don't need jason langstorff jason langstorff right sure um so um, what we're going to do here is we're going to use attribute selectors to um, kind of provide ourselves like a little bit of a debugging experience. Okay. Um, so let's look at, let, let's see, let's grab, um, so we'll do image. So just raw image, and then we'll open up an attribute selector and we'll say, uh, actually, no, sorry, let's do this um, image. And then we're going to do colon and we'll do not. So we'll kind of like negate this. So not if it doesn't have an alt attribute. Oh, like that? Yep. Yeah, exactly. And then let's put some, we're going to use Prince's favorite color again. And then let's put a like three pixel dashed fire brick border. So I'm going to do something that I learned that makes me really happy. Which oh, is yeah. That if you use Even an better. outline, it doesn't change the layout. And oh, perfect. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dashed fire brick. You, do, you, like, you can't not say that with your tough guy voice. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's tough guy voice territory for sure. Okay. So we've got, ta-da. Okay, cool. So this is really neat because we've now created a sel select, or uh, we've we've created a selection where we can just like kind of use this for like debugging now. So if we want to just kind of like turn this on and like find um, you know images that aren't properly attributed, um, we can do that. And the cool thing about this is that it's looking for um, like an alt with a truthy value. Right. So mm -hmm. we have the empty alt and that one still works. You know, so you just you just have to be human like this isn't going to pick up all of the things and you're going to have to like look at it, um, you know, uh, critically. But um, this does help you out a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a cool, uh, cool thing. Let's take this a little bit further as well. And um, let's get some links on the page. Okay. Um, so maybe we could have some and these can just be like raw links. Um, you know, they don't have to have like fancy text. Maybe we can do, you know, your your site, my site, and I don't know, something else. Okay, so we've got chan.dev, and then uh, let's do one more for, uh, we were talking about the Netlify CLI. Well, let's do that in FYI slash CLI. Perfect. Oh okay. yeah, this is, this is great. I could not have asked for three better links to uh, to do this demo. You're, you're a step ahead of me. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do with this is I wanna take this as an opportunity to demonstrate all of the options that we have in attribute selection, um, because it's not just the raw attributes as we saw earlier, you were able to kind of like, you know, uh, select on the value as well. So we're gonna kind of like tie into like, or we're gonna look at the different types of selections that we can make um, via links. Links are a really great way to do this. So. Um, let's do this. Hmm? Uh, you're, you're like making eh? it nice now. No, no, who? Nothing. Me? <laughs> what? Uh, this is we. So the chat who anybody who's been watching this show for a while knows that if I start touching uh, CSS, I like can't. I you can't, can't stop. stop. It just gets <laughs> it gets so bad. Uh, let's go with 50. Yeah, that, you're very that. good at it. And then we'll go with, uh, and we'll just do one of these and we'll say auto and then a zero at the bottom and I'll spell auto right. And then we should get a really nice looking 
There it goes. Okay. And then I awesome. need to, okay. Sorry. Just one second. I'm almost yeah. Done. No problem. Sorry. No problem. See, no this problem. Is, you see what happened? Chat. Why did you let me write CSS? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's a little, it's still that not looks good. great. It's still it not good. good. I still I think it looks bad. magnificent. It's I'm just glorious. Gonna, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make it 90. <laughs> what have I done to everybody? Everybody, please help me send, send help, send an adult. Okay. Here we go. There we go. That's fine. I don't care anymore. Correct. We're happy. I think it's. I, I mean, I think it looks glorious. So I think, yeah, I think we're good. Let's let, let's go with it. Um, okay. We, oh, links. That's what we were on. Links, links, links. So we're going to use some attribute. We're going to use links to kind of talk about all of the different types of selections that you can make. Um, could you do one, me one favor though on the links? Um, yes. Could you make the one to the Netlify um, CLI? Could you make that not HTTPS? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we're gonna use attribute selectors to do a similar type of debugging thing. I mean, this is pro right now. This is this is this is great. Is this this is this is actually quickly becoming, I think, our like podcast site, like the homepage for our, our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're gonna do, um, let's see, I think we can do, let's do an A uh, selector and then an href attribute selection. I don't know if we actually need the A, but let's just put it on there for, for fun. I think we, do we other... could, but then if somebody were to try to apply an href to like a button, it would also target that. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's leave it kind of like specified like this. Okay, so now what we've done is like if we had, so for values, we can make full selections of, of values. Do we do, um, what is it? You did a json.af, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want, you can make a selection just on uh, on yours, like specifically, and do, so like at, uh, href equals, and then put the full domain in there. Okay, so we'll go so, with. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we've cool. got just awesome. the one. Yeah. So this this is only going to match on that value, right? So if the href is exactly this value, it's going to match for that. Um, now we can do some other types of selections. So we can do a starts with. So why don't we do this for mine for um, or actually let's let's kind of like go into like debugging. Let's make yours let's make yours like a different color or something like that. Um, like maybe your favorite color. Let's save outline though because I think we're going to need it in a second. Okay, let's go. Let's go with a uh, an homage to John O. Tander mm. and go with tomato. Tomato. Mm, tomato. Doesn't have enough. That doesn't have enough. Uh, not enough juice. It's not. It's not. I don't think it meets contrast, which always kind of bugs me. Let's go with dark I red. Know, it's such there a beautiful color. Okay, we'll go with we'll go with the dark red, which is almost okay. indistinguishable from fire brick. <laughs> It's you know it's close. It just doesn't have that same magic touch as fire brick, and doesn't, it doesn't have yeah. the fire brick name. It, it, yeah, it doesn't make me want to like <laughs> pick up a battle <laughs> hammer. Fire brick. We got crimson. American twenty fifty is saying uh, crimson. crimson. Let's do. Let's see what crimson looks like. Is that? It looks oh, like it's got nice enough contrast. Too. That yeah, seems okay. Got some, got some some juice. You can always make it bigger if you want. Oh yeah, we could we could do that. We can uh, we can go. That that always helps with the uh, you know perception. Yeah, nice. Look at that. Okay, now cool. everybody has to see it. Um, yeah. and I'm gonna pull that one save, out. So save Firebrick though, because we're gonna use another selector for that one though. Got it. I'm ready. Okay, we're gonna Why do a kind of a format like that. Do you see this? What is that <laughs> nonsense? Get I, it out of here. I burn all auto formatters after that. <laughs> <laughs> so. What if we just want to um, kind of do that same type of debugging technique we did with image, um, mm. but for insecure URLs? So what do you think that that would look like? Like we would want something like this, All right? So we, we just want to match the beginning and then yep. we would put this outline in. Yep. And it does nothing. It does nothing. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, this because it's only matching, this equals is going to match only on exact matches. Mm. Um, but we have an option for looking at the beginning and that we use that like caret right before it. So it'll be caret equals. Um, 
you really do get like sucked into CSS, don't you? Chat did it. It's not my oh, fault. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, Comic Sans is great. Okay, cool. So we got Jason. All right. There. So you said you said carrot. Yeah, carrot equals is going to look at just the beginning. So as long as the beginning hey. matches, yeah. So, so now, now this... anything like that, and then if we we can make this more generic, right? Like we delete this, and now it matches all of them. Yep. Which completely defeats the purpose. So we do it this way instead. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Yeah. So we've got we've got that. So the caret equals is going to match at the beginning or like starts with, um, and then there's also a like star equal. So let's say we wanted to style anything to my URL, whether it's secure or not. Okay. So you said star equals does that. So yep. I'm going to go star equals, and then I would want to do uh, like just chan .dev. the chan dot dev, right? Yep. And then cool, cool. we can say for this one. And let's um, make it big because I want my link to be bigger than yours, obviously. Obviously. Wait, did I not? I, is that not bigger? Let's go. Let's I, go way I, bigger. Yeah, it's got to be like two or it's bust be at least. Noticeable. Yeah yeah yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. I like how the links don't align with the uh, the <laughs> the, yeah. the characters above. I'm kind I, of this feeling is great. like that's great. <laughs> that, is that because I did this? No, I think the, the no no no. Just the order of the links. The <laughs> this is so much is, worse. Is what I want. <laughs> I mean that just. Your, your URL is under my face and mine is under your face. And it just, it feels like the level of confusion that we're going for. The, the, it's the right kind of chaos, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's the, um, the star equals, the star equals is going to match any part of the, um, of the selection. So that's super cool. Yeah. That's, um, that's super handy. Cause this yes. is one of those things that like, I feel like, you know, the, the part of this stuff that's really interesting is when you, you start getting into like I am attempting to find all of the links to this domain. And sometimes it's prefixed with www. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes yeah. it's like docs.domain.com or app.domain.com. But I want to make sure I find them all because we only want to link to them like one or two times, not like 150 times, right? So there's <laughs> there's a lot of uh, a lot of power in being able to just quickly highlight this stuff in a page. Um, or, you know, if you're trying to like get a report together to to show the marketing team that you did in fact link to the app, you can find yeah. it really quickly you know there's stuff like that that you can do that's uh it's it's just very handy to know these tricks even if it's only for debugging um totally or, yep like one thing that i really like for this is if you want to match the file extension and say like hey this is a pdf let's add a an icon at the end or something yes. like that right is there a way to do that one uh pff, gosh i don't even know uh let's see i do P uh, oh do it do I it. do. I do. You, All right, let's do this. Here we go. Here's, here's what I'm going to do. Flex, Actually, man. You don't have to ask permission to flex on your own show. <laughs> Gee, come on. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. We've got um, <laughs> we've got a couple PNGs here. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's do a selector for anything that ends in PNG. And that is a dollar sign at the end, I think. Now I'm going to now I'm going to embarrass myself. <laughs> And these ones will override with an outline of, uh, we'll go with three picks, solid crimson. So what we should see is these two should now get a, a solid outline. And they oh, didn't, which means I screwed image. It up. Image, you want to do image. It's You're on href. Or oh, a. God, right. Image, and then we got to do source. There it there is. Okay, go. so I got I got the part that I, that I wanted to get right, right. It's just the rest that yeah, I screwed yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, that's not a bad place to be, right? That's what friends are for. <laughs> that's why we pair program instead of just doing it on our own and you lose a whole day to this nonsense. <laughs> that's true. I mean, at yeah. some point, somebody from the chat is just going to show up at my house and like gently guide me away from the style sheet. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's time to sit down. You're, you're okay. <laughs> you know, another way, another way to solve this problem is with a, uh, with a rubber corgi. Oh, rubber cor Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Look at this little friend. <laughs> they can be yours. Free shipping. Look. look, uh, look. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, uh, dev, dev dot slash store. <laughs> and you can get yourself a little rubber corgi. <laughs> look at him. Look at this friend. So cute. Oh. So cute. The debugging partner you need. That's it's 100% true. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so it's like, hey, why did none of my CSS work? Well, friend, you did it wrong. Okay. All right. Oh, we, uh, it's burger I time. Know. It's 1040. It's 1040. It's, it, so we didn't get as far as... Uh, okay, so there's one more thing, and I think we'll kind of... Uh, there's one more thing. And so this is kind of like the key ingredient to like building like systems with this stuff. And it is the um, tilde equals uh, okay. uh, selector there. All right. And what does that one do? Which so also, while you're writing that, I just want to say, I'm so glad that you called out the dollar sign equals because I have never been able to think of a good example to demonstrate the end. Um, because I always think like a URL, you never know what's going to be in the end of a URL. So you can't really like demonstrate it with URLs, but like with, with that, it's great. The image source is, is a perfect example of that. I dig it. Um, okay. So, so the tilde equals is kind of, um, is, is interesting. And this is where it gets into like framework territory. So what this does is it will match exactly like class does. So it's a space delimited list of strings so what this what this does and this and i swear this is going to push us into kind of like burger time um very shortly so this is where we can start kind of building up like our own apis so okay. for this let's let's do something like um uh let's make a let's make a class right now for like avatar so you can keep that or, or let's make a new thing we'll just do like a dot avatar Okay, so I got avatar. Yep. And then we're going to use um, this. Uh, how are we going to do this? So let's do a data. Let's like pass in some like APIs. So we'll do like data dash. Uh, nope, let's scratch this. Sorry. Instead of a class, we're going to do data avatar. Sorry, we're just going to go go full bore into this. Okay. So we um, can, and we can just skip out the, yep. the class name, right? So yep. we just take that off. Perfect. Yes. And so now here we can start doing stuff that's like really cool. We can start like adding some um, like, you know, various properties. So we could do, let's do like uh, small. Let's just go simple. And okay. then let's do like another one that's like, you know, bigger. So let's see, we have like 40 pixels and maybe we can do one that's round. Yeah, sure. Let's do a round one. And we'll do uh, border radius 50%. Perfect. I think that'll work. So then I can just apply these to. Yep. So now you can apply these. So so data dash avatar equals round. You can do another one that's small. And then to to demonstrate why this is valuable that we use the tilde, let's put both of those on the same one. Small and round. You know that's actually wow. pretty. Wow. That's actually a pretty apt description of me, small and round. That's how my kids describe me all the time, at least. <laughs> this, this feels too self-aggrandizing, so I'm going to actually switch this up. You can make me bigger. I, there you go. I, you're, I'm not you're, worried about it. Yeah, yeah there we go. You're now in charge. Big and round. Um, Okay, cool. So that's the value of these um, these attribute selectors. So this is really cool because now we can start kind of like building our own like API. And unlike class class, which can kind of get polluted between you know your third party library, the stuff that you're doing, your utility selectors, and all that kind of stuff, we're creating these little like, like kind of like um uh like just little what is it? we're creating these like little like pockets of API, right? So like small and round is now like associated with this kind of like, I don't know, I think of it kind of like a function, right? Yeah. Or um, or like a component even, you know? And so we have this 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 flag that we're, we're attaching, but specifically to this. And yeah. when you think of like BIM, you have to do like, you know, class avatar, you know, dash dash. You have to go through like all this dance to not just have like avatar dot small, because small could be coming from anywhere, right? Or apply to a bunch of different stuff. This right. is all isolated. And it's very, it's a very fun way to like apply styles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, chat, I need everybody to take bets on who Michael was just consulting when he looked off to his right there when he was trying to think of something. Because he was like, he was like, uh, what am I trying to think of here? And then he came back with an answer. So he's got somebody over there with cue cards. I want to know who it is. <laughs> oh, man. If 
if I could hire a producer for my life to just sit <laughs> like right here, oh, that's living. It was that's it, living. Was it this guy? <laughs> the the corgi producer. I need it. Okay, cool. So we are going to run out of time, and yes. so we need to we need to hustle because I yes. think that yes. yeah because we have some burger stuff to do, and I think that we can probably jam it in now. Before we get into that, so I have a kind of like guide. That or I've been playing with this stuff for like a handful of years. And so mm -hmm. if I just throw up a site, the, the styling is all whack. I did something and it's all jacked. But if you go to avocss.dev, there are some additional, like there's some additional information on kind of like the way that I think about how we can use attributes and, and whatnot. See, this should be dark and those colors would make sense, ah, but on see, light, it's, it doesn't make sense at all. Gotcha. So anyway, this is kind of the idea. These are some of the ideas that I have around how we can use these to make like really cool, um, you know, design systems and whatnot, um, or how I have been using them just in, you know, private, non-public repos. So let's go to NPM real quick. We're going to move on. What we're talking about kind of embodies the principles and videos that I share on that site, though. And so that's what I, want, what I wanted to share. Okay. What, what am I doing here? Uh, look for burger.css. Oh, you like did a thing. Yeah, I just pushed this up just to do like right before our call. So it's not so much better. So much better than what I thought we were going to do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to need to import that. So you'll probably use like a link in your head or something like that. And we can use um, what? Oh, unpackage. yeah, we can like unpackage this or something. Yeah. Yeah. How does one do that? It's uh, uh, let's go to unpack it or unpackage.com. Unpackage and you just yep. do one of these and it works. Yeah. It does. Oh, man, it's so Boom. cool. Okay. Also, for those distributing CSS, there's a style property that you can put in your package JSON. And so that will redirect it. It'll make it like this, the source file. So it'll like actually make it instead of index.js, it'll make it this. So when you go to burger.css, you get the, the source file. I got something wrong. Needs a cross uh, origin. Okay, fine. I can do a cross origin. Cross oh, origin anonymous. What else? Without if, the integrity, I don't have that. Sorry. Okay. If it doesn't work, we can just copy and paste the CSS. Yeah. Let's file. let's see what happens. I think it'll work. I think it's just okay. the VS Code is telling me that I'm being unsafe. And I mean, let's be honest. We all knew that was true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's make a new section, and we're gonna make a burger. Um, okay. This might actually because the the styles were very hastily written. Uh, this may affect other styles on the page. So I apologize for that. How but. Dare you. Um, we could comment those out maybe if we don't want to see uh, the, the, yeah, no, it definitely <laughs> abused your page. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I'll clean okay. this up a bit once we, uh, once we get done. <laughs> awesome. So let's do a, um, let's, let's start. Um, we can use Diz for this or we can use an LI, LI if we want to, um, or unordered list or how we went. Let's do that. Unordered list. Okay. Yeah. How many do and we need? So uh, let's start with two. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to use a data attribute selector, um, and so so we're going to apply the data bun or data dash bun, and then equals crown. It's going to get us the top bun. Ah, and then yep, and then heel is for the bottom. Love it. Okay, cool. So let's see what we got there. Oh no. <laughs> I think our styles aren't loading. Oh wait, no, they are loading though. Okay, let me let me consult what. Oh man, I'm gonna be so sad if this doesn't work. Is data. it data? Here's data bun. Data bun. Crown. Why? Why? Why, why aren't you working? Shoot. Oh, maybe I need to. So put it in, in the UL. Do like data burger. Be really confusing if that. Oh, you know why that worked? Because uh, you because this is where the um, all the display stuff. Oh, the display set. flex that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, we needed right. to like sense. reset all the the li stuff for that yes. to work. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. This all is right. not production ready CSS. It this is... is a production ready burger, my friend. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get off this stream. We're gonna produce this burger, and it's gonna ship to my stomach. <laughs> 
yeah. Okay. So we got. Uh, so we have the crown and we have the heel. Um, you could screw me up by putting a new crown. I do not handle that well. I'm, I'm at not going to so do that. Just, okay. So cool, cool. I'm, I'm ready for whatever comes next, though. Like okay. we got a somebody's already ahead of us where's the beef <laughs> where's the beef okay so let's do a data patty right there data patty yes any any attributes oh let's just let's no, just, just leave it like that it. yeah oh my okay, god cool. what oh, it, wow what is I don't know. this is a 10 pound okay. burger <laughs> yeah so that's the sarah drasner burger um so <laughs> let's make this a <laughs> Is Sarah here to defend herself today? She's not. <laughs> Pile on, everybody. <laughs> What's missing from this one is the bucket of water that Sarah's burger floats in. <laughs> I am very much looking forward to that burger off. I will be oh cooking along God. at home. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see it have both of them. They're going to be amazing. We've we have talked we have talked about making it into some kind of like charity event where we let people like basically show up and we're going to set up opposing food trucks and just oh, yell like just amazing har harass each other across, <laughs> across a parking lot. <laughs> I am there for it. A hundred percent. So we can actually make this a more reasonable patty size. So okay. we can do um, with the attribute um, value. We can do um, something that I really like. So we'll do equals and we're going to do weight colon. And let's do 70 grams. That's what I really like for my double smash burgers. Um, we're going to put it all together, though. Oh, so no you, space there. Yeah. Now, one thing that's really interesting about oh. this is that it has. So this is this is a personal preference. But one thing that I really one thing that I got into with utility classes is adding special characters to differentiate things. So like for a media query, I might put like an at in there. Um, the thing that's unfortunate with classes, though, is, is that you have to escape those special characters. In this case, okay. they're they're just strings, so we can put any special character that we want in there, and it's still kind of grippable in the source. Right. Um, so we just get to drop that right in there. Yeah. So we That's have really you know, nice. 70, 80, 90 grams. And this reminds me a lot of you know if you do this style, obviously it's all practice and not you know this isn't really enforceable. Um, something cool about this style is that it really does start to feel a lot like working with components, right? So I have mm -hmm. a patty component and then I have a prop of weight and a value of, you know, 70 grams. Yes. Now I don't want to rush you, but we have like four minutes to finish this burger. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. So let's, um, let's, okay. So let's, um, add some cheese. So okay. we'll put some cheese. Um, let's do it above. Cause I think it'll break below. Uh, I don't know if you have strong preferences on that, but do uh, data cheese. Cool. And then um, also done. we can, Love that. I, I can't, I, you have to have a toasted bun, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to show you a little bit of composition. We could, if we wanted to add, um, you know, bun, like bun toasting to the bun. So I think it's, um, if you go data bun, you can do toasted. Like so. Yeah. Yes. But, that, but that's just the top. I want both. So I'm going to compose this in. Let's take that off of both. Oh, and okay. let's do, we'll do this. I'm going to compose stuff in. Um, and so we'll go up to burger and we'll say data uh, burger dash dash bun. So this is kind of like, like um, what is it? Uh, Bem? Kind of Bemish, where this I'm going to like target bemmy. the things below. Yeah. So I'm going to use two dashes for that to target those. And then I'm going to say equals toasted on there. Oh, interesting. Okay. So now it's okay. going to toast both of them. Yeah. So we kind of like cascade a little bit in there. Um, and so now we have, um, you know, I know we ha only have like a minute left, but we could add, um, we have pickles, we have uh, mustard, which is, you know, one okay, of my so favorites. The pickles go on the bottom. Right. Cool. Yep. Yeah. We need some pickles down there. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then we can do some, uh, some, you know, I like, I like mustard right on that. I, I just pile up the mustard, like, right below the or right on that bottom patty right there on the bottom and, patty or sorry no on the bottom uh the on the heel gotcha gotcha and then yeah let's make this a double let's make this a double i think doubles are great especially mm. if you know they're they're that small um well, this and is then, a nice touch i like it <laughs> thank you it only works for the double so if you know you you try to cascade that even more it's not gonna work um so we can do and then one last thing um let's do data burger um okay uh shoot toasted uh okay let's do data burger 
dash dash patty and um we'll do equals uh what do we want to do this um shoot it's not the weight it's the oh yeah cook so we'll do a colon cook and we'll let's make that medium dash rare And that should, oh, yeah. yeah. So it kind of like just, it was subtle, but it was there. It, it, the, the gradient shifts just a little bit, so it's a little so watch, bit more. Let's, let's you see everybody the the <laughs> thicker gradient there. Put it no, wait, put it back in. Now it's nice and ah, uh, that's thin. Look at that. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so I I could tweak this all day long. Um, and and if you want uh, a, a giving Sarah a chance to defend herself. We did build a website together <laughs> where um, Sarah did an explanation of, of her burger. Um, so, so this is mine. It's got some details on how it's put together. And then Sarah did such a better illustration. Oh my gosh. It. Like, I, I, like, I don't know why I brought animation to it. Like I legitimately brought like a wet noodle to a gunfight with, <laughs> with Sarah Drasner saying like, Hey, let's build a website with animations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyways, this this is uh, both of us doing a little bit of write up about how we make our our different burgers. Um, so that's a that's a good way to to go a little bit deeper. Uh, where should people go if they want more information on this? So we've got Avo CSS. Uh, yeah. Anywhere else you want people to go? Yeah. So uh, there's if you go a little bit down, or I think if you go down just a little bit, there's a couple links to um, two blog posts that I wrote about this style. Um, one is just kind of a description of the style itself. And then another one is kind of comparing it specifically to how you would author things in BEM. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, kind of like, you know, how it extends a little bit. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so this is just something that I've been having a lot of fun with. I think it solved a lot of problems for me. I think that it, com it communicates a lot better. I think the com composition is really neat, as you can kind of see with the burger and being able to like, you know, kind of make selections and kind of like share those AP, lift those APIs up and whatnot. Um, so yeah, there's just been a lot of fun. I hope that, you know, this demo kind of clarifies some of the things that we weren't able to cover in the, uh, in the talk. Um, but it's just kind of like some of the really fun ways that you can like use and abuse attribute selectors to do some really fun stuff in CSS in my opinion. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so let's see, I, I tried to share this link. It didn't, it, I'm just going to put it in here. This is a, a link to the discord, which yeah. is uh discord.gg slash lunch dev. And yes. that'll take you over to, to that discord and ask you if you want to join. So, um, yeah, I'm close that here so that I don't, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, actually I need to keep that up, don't I, so that I don't lose the link. All right, uh, so with that being said, everybody go make sure you head over to Twitter, give, give Chantastic a follow. Um, and <laughs> as always, this show has been live captioned. We have had, uh, let me make this bigger so we can see what's going on. We've had Amanda with us all day from White Coat Captioning, writing everything down so that folks who need it have access. Um, that's always on the homepage of the site. That is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and people I forget to mention, you, the subscribers, every time y'all kick in, that actually helps me pay these bills. So I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. I saw some subs get gifted today from Dom, from Ben. Uh, I saw some people uh, subbing on their own. Thank you so, so much. That really, really helps out. Um, with that being said, while you're headed over to the website, go and check out the schedule. We've got some incredible stuff coming up. Uh, tomorrow, we're doing a special episode. We don't usually do Fridays, but we're doing one tomorrow. I'm bringing on Taylor Barnett. We're going to talk about serverless Ooh. databases. So Planet Scale is super cool. We're gonna we're gonna build a project using Planet Scale and Next.js. Um, it's very very powerful. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Come check that one out. Next Tuesday we are going to have Alexander Spilato coming on talking about Gatsby WordPress theme. So headless WordPress combined with Gatsby, get something out there and and go. Then we're gonna take a Thanksgiving break. But when we come back, we're coming back in strong. So make sure you scan through this. There's gonna be even more episodes coming up. Uh, hit that ag on Google. Ga Whoa hit that add on Google calendar button so that you get notified of new episodes. Make sure you follow on Twitch, all those good things. Um, with that being said, we've got, uh, we've got a, normally I would tell y'all to come and, uh, and we would go raid somebody, but today is Prisma's serverless conference. And I'm actually going to be speaking at it in like 20 minutes. So, um, <laughs> so go, go head over there today. That's where we're going to go. It's actually on YouTube. And uh, I think this is a direct link to it. Let me, is this, is this the actual event? Yes. Okay, so this is the actual event. It's happening live right now. You can, you can head over to it. And I will be speaking there very, very shortly. So 
with that being said, Michael, any any parting words for everyone? That's it. I uh, thanks so much for being here. Um, and this was a, a lot of fun. I want to honor the 11, uh, 11 o'clock or the the hour ninety minute timeline. But you know, thanks so much. This is this is a hell of a time. Thank you. This it was an absolute blast, an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for hanging out. Chat, as always, thank you for spending some time with us today. We will see you next time.